Hey there, good afternoon. Welcome to the 4 to 5. I'm Eric Chilton alongside Chad Silbert and Stacey Spivey. I'm hey. like that uh, that fun cousin that just shows up every once like in a while. Cousin Eddie. It's <laughs> a fun surprise. I am like Cousin Eddie. I drove my, uh, my fifth RV wheel, my <laughs> RV, and parked it outside. And uh, yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> hey, do you know where you can watch us? Did you know that you can watch us on air, online, Fire Stick, Roku, pretty much anything where you can get TV? We are there and on Facebook. So go ahead and get on there and chat with us. We're gonna have some fun conversations coming up. But first, we wanna get to our top story at four o'clock. President Biden just announced his administration will offer 500 million free rapid COVID tests to Americans. These are some examples of what those at-home tests look like. Now, the president's announcement is a shift from an earlier plan, which offered reimbursements for the test from private insurance companies, but people would have to find the test on their own. The Biden administration will purchase tests and ship them for free starting in January. President Biden says with the Omicron variant spreading, those fully vaccinated have greater protection and those who already had their booster have much less reason to worry. The answer is straightforward. If you're not fully vaccinated, you have good reason to be concerned. You're at a high risk of getting sick. And if you get sick, you're likely to spread it to others, including friends and family. <clears throat> the unvaccinated have a significantly higher risk of ending up in a hospital <clears throat> or even dying. Almost everyone who has died from COVID-19 in the past many months has been unvaccinated. President Biden did say it's possible we'll see more vaccinated people get COVID with this variant. If you need one of these tests, you'll be able to use a website to order them. The federal government will also set up vaccination sites around the nation once again and offer additional ventilators and equipment to hospitals from the national stockpile. The president's improvised plan comes after the CDC said the Omicron variant is now the dominant strain in the U.S. The variant now makes up more than 73% of new infections, which is a nearly six-fold increase compared to last week. Guilford County has learned of five COVID-related deaths in the last day alone. As more people get tested before the holidays, the county positivity rate is up to 15.9%. That's 5% more than the state's percentage of tests returning positive, which sits at 10.3%. The state reported more than 1,600 patients hospitalized with COVID, and Cone Health is treating 85 of those patients. More basketball games are canceled because of the rise in cases on teams. UNCG men's basketball canceled today's home game against Johnson and Wales because of cases on the Spartans team. UNCG has suspended team activities temporarily. Wake Forest University canceled tomorrow's game against Boston College as BC deals with cases within its program. Neither team will reschedule that game. Fans will be refunded for their tickets. Whole Man Food Ministries is celebrating the season of giving by feeding the community and also caring for community health. The Winston-Salem Church handed out more than 250 boxes of food today to those in need and also offered COVID booster shots. It's the fourth time the ministry has held an event like this. Pastor Camilla Washington explains what pushes the ministry to hold these types of events. I always say we're better together, so we're offering something to the community that can make us all better together because if we go out in the community and we're not vaccinated, we're harming someone else. So let's, let's do something to make us our best. Holman Ministries is also hosting a blood drive tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So we're talking about the uh, first day of the season of winter being today. And if you look at this um, temperature wise, it's not as bad as it could be, right? Yeah, but this is cool for us this time of year, pretty chilly. Normally we'd be in the low 50s or right around 50. We're at 40 right now in Greensboro. Uh, Burlington is showing up at 37, is 43 in Winston-Salem, 42 in High Point. And uh, overall with this pattern, I think we're going to see chilly overnight lows, but not as cold as this past morning or yesterday morning because these temperatures being held uh, up a little bit by the cloud cover we're going to see. Isolated shower, they're out there already. Uh, that'll be the case over overnight, but I think tomorrow we bounce back pretty quickly. It might be a little bit windy. Winds 10 to 20 out of the northwest and gusting up to 25 uh, for tomorrow. 51 for the high, and that's pretty much on the money. Here's the radar, and uh, yes, we are seeing scattered showers across the area. In case you're wondering, you can see this is a what we call a winter
winter type radar, which shows the different precipitation types. There was a little bit of sleet in Charlotte today, but not so much here. And if you go out to a wider shot, you can see there's more rain moving in from the southwest back up to the northeast. We'll keep an eye on that, but safe to say just scattered showers as we head into the night tonight. Just a quick look at the seven day forecast shows 51 and 48 for Wednesday and Thursday. Fairly clear. Christmas Eve, the high 56 with a low of 44 and our Christmas weekend, Saturday and Sunday looks nice. 64 and 62 with partly cloudy skies. From church altars to table centerpieces, this Christmas flower blooms in popularity this time of year. But before you buy an arrangement for your holiday gathering, WFMY News 2's Megan Malaris verifies if the poinsettia is potentially deadly to our pets. That sound means it's time to verify deck the halls, but don't let your holiday enthusiasm land you in the veterinarian's office on Christmas Eve. As much as we love to admire our festive foliage, our four legged friends are drooling over it. It's time to revisit a claim that circulates every Christmas season. Is it true poinsettias are poisonous to pets? If so, are they deadly? To verify, we consulted the American Veterinary Medical Foundation, the Pet Poison Helpline, and the National Capital Poison Center. Our sources agree the poinsettia plant is irritating, but not deadly to pets. If a pet eats it, typical symptoms are mouth rash, upset stomach, drooling, and in some cases, a skin rash from the sap. But researchers found even 500 to 600 leaves are not deadly when ingested. However, the Pet Poison Helpline explained there's no antidote for poinsettia poisoning, so call a veterinarian if symptoms are severe. The American Veterinary Medical Association warns holly and mistletoe are more toxic than poinsettias and can cause intestinal issues. Tree water is another concern, especially if it is either stagnant or treated with preservatives. In conclusion, we verified poinsettias are mildly toxic to pets, but no, they generally are not deadly. That said, call a veterinarian with any concerns. And to be safe, keep flowers, holiday flowers, and decorations out of paws reach. And remember, tinsel, ribbons, and ornaments pose hazards too, as they can get stuck in your pet's intestines. With your Verify, I'm Megan Malaris. If you hear a claim or see a post on social media that gives you pause, just send it our way. It's easy to do that. You can send a selfie video, maybe a short paragraph. The email address is verify at WFMY.com. We'll be right back. Is that right? Uh -huh. Does that foot goes like that? Okay, so we're trying to do the dance, you're a jerk, and somebody said it's we like should, you're... We should do that easily. Oh, it's just called the jerk. The song's you're a jerk. <laughs> do, do I just walk around? <laughs> Is that the <laughs> dance? Just, <be> <laughs> just oh, walk like Eric Chilton. That's the you're a jerk That's dance. Right. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't either. That's just skipping. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> you're a skipper. I know. Our director, Brad.
Has the pandemic got you thinking about a new career? Rockingham Community College is helping people navigate new careers with its new Career Development Services Department. The department, which formed over the summer, helps job seekers prepare for their job search, even providing some skills training. In the spring, the department will teach an employability lab and computer basics course. The cost of the program could even be waived for people who are unemployed or underemployed. Uh, figuring out what you need to do to prepare for that job, whether it's dress for success, whether it's interview, whether it's resume, whether it's any type of workshop. And then we want you to stay on the job. So we also have essential skills or what we call soft skills like communication, teamwork, leadership skills. So all of those areas are covered under the career development services area. Gwendolyn Roy says RCC will also offer continuing education courses that will help people expand their knowledge for their current career or explore an entirely new one. These courses include cybersecurity, vehicle inspection and coding. Roy says the school has seen an increase in interest throughout the pandemic. There's some students that don't want to go to through a one year or two year program. And so our continuing education or con ed department offers 96 hours and below classes where you can get a certification. So a lot of those classes fall under those. Now, if you're interested in learning about these new courses and career resources, just look for this story on our website. One thing I really like about this program um, from, you know, what she was talking about was how, you know, you can get some training as well. You know, you can learn how to apply for jobs and that sort of thing, but you also get training in like computers. And I mean, a lot of people don't have basic computer skills. And yeah. that's something that will never go away, right? right. Like you're always going to have a need for cybersecurity and coding and that mm -hmm. type of thing. So that's where a lot of people are headed anyway. Yeah, cybersecurity is such a huge thing right huge. now. I mean, we hear about different ransomware attacks all the time. These jobs are so needed. So I think it's really cool how different colleges, and I know some universities in North Carolina mm -hmm. too, are offering these cybersecurity boot camps to where I think it's six months you can train and come out of that class with a certification to get a job that starting pay is like seventy, eighty thousand dollars I was talking to a friend of mine who does employment type services and uh, she was joking with me one day she goes what would you do like if you didn't do what you do now I'm like I don't know if you think about our skill sets they're so odd right. like we, we, can, we can talk to large groups like I mean right. I don't know what <laughs> what was your what backup you job do? or what is your backup job if you I had to get one I don't know I've always talked about a retirement job but that's fun right that's uh -huh. not making a living at it but I do I'm a big computer geek I would actually love to learn how to code what about you Stacey uh, I don't know I really love I worked at a boutique for a little bit and I, I would love to like own a children's boutique or oh, even neat. just, you know, women's fashion boutique. I think it'd be there a lot you. of fun. And you? Uh, I just cannot wait to be a cruise director. I am so <laughs> oh my excited. Gosh. You would be the best. I just can't wait to get over the speaker. Uh, uh, limbo on the Lido deck at <laughs> Oh my gosh. You would literally be perfect <laughs> Chad for that. Chad would have a straw hat doing the, everybody come out. <laughs> Not that I'm looking for a new career boss, but you know, that's gonna be my backup. It's your fallback. <laughs> right. Well, Lauren asked you on Facebook, if you could go back to school and change careers, which would it be and why? We got some great answers here. Lamont says, drug counselor, because of the addiction that I've experienced and how I overcame it. Delisha writes, if I could go back, I wouldn't have chosen college. I would have chosen a trade. Not sure which trade, but I do know I spent years in college getting a master's degree that I'm not even using. Greg would be a music teacher. He said, I should have followed my passion and trusted God. Brittany says, physical therapy and sports medicine because she's a sports fan and would love to work with athletes. Keevil wouldn't change anything. And Adrian would be a movie director. Ooh, a movie director. Pretty cool things fun. there. Yeah. I don't know what I would, if I had to go back to school, I don't know what I would go back to school for. I know. Gosh, yeah. yeah, I really don't know if I had to start all over. First of all, I don't want to start all over again. Would you live in the no. dorms? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Oh, gosh. However, Van one thing, Wilder, right. I would totally go back just because all of my friends, my like core group of friends live, we all lived in the same town and now we live everywhere. So mm -hmm. it would just be nice to go back and like be in college again. Oh, the the social part of it. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Don't have to do the homework the or anything like that. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, it would be funny Essays. if you did go back to school now and you lived in the dorm, wouldn't that be hilarious? You would be, the, they would love to hang out with the old guy. You know what I mean? Right, I yes. That would be a thing. I'd try to throw down with the kids, you That's know, right. see how, see how, 
See yeah. how it goes these days. Just stop right could, from the stuff. I think right you there. could hang. Oh, no yeah, problems. Both yeah. of you could. No problem. Maybe we'll just head over to UNCG and see how things go. <laughs> just hang out, see how that goes. Just walk around on campus. <laughs> They'll be like this on uh, security. Uh, there's two guys from the news here. <laughs> and they're just walking around. <laughs> right. They're trying to be cool. Uh, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Wandering college. Uh, We are following breaking news in Greensboro right now. Greensboro police say one person has been shot outside the Four Seasons Town Center in Greensboro on the J.C. Penney side of the mall. As of right now, there is no suspect information. We also don't know the condition of that person shot. But as you can imagine, four days before Christmas, that mall is probably swarming with people who are trying to get some last minute Christmas gifts. We do have teams on the way to the scene right now. We're working on a live picture that we will have shortly and we will continue to update you on this developing story. All right, first day of winter in the books almost here. We want to talk about this uh, change in the timing here, the amount of day that we get right, shorter winter days, longer summer. So now that means after today, we'll start that turn where our days get a little bit longer. So today, sun up at 727 and sunset 509. That's nine hours and 42 minutes of daytime. But then in two weeks, it goes to nine hours and 47 minutes. And then in four weeks, so in a month, will be 10 hours and two minutes. And you see how that's going. So this is that turning point. And I believe Tim Buckley and I were talking a little bit earlier. It's like less than 30 seconds longer for tomorrow. So find something to do with your extra time you'll have out there. Um, you look at temperatures right now, 40 degrees in the Triad, 39 in Raleigh, 47 Wilmington, pretty comfortable hour by hour heading into the night. Not a lot of change, a lot of cloud cover. We'll see scattered showers uh, overnight tonight, at least in the next several hours. You can see that here's the short term radar, but there's more back to the west. We'll pop up that seven day and show you this rain event, by the way, is only for tonight. And then we see that change into tomorrow and we're uh, sunny again. It will be windy though, so know that that is a thing. 51 degrees and windy on your Wednesday, 48 and sunny on Thursday. Christmas Eve, the high 56, the low 44 for Santa's ride with a high of 64 on Saturday. Sunday, partly cloudy 62. Slight rain chance next week, but we're still way above normal. The average high is 51. We're at 60 for Monday and Tuesday.
So we all know that having a holiday spirit, that is definitely a thing. And it seems that each year we'll find stories of people going above and beyond to give back. Well, Corey Jones is definitely that guy times three. He decided to raise a little money and buy toys and give them to kids in marginalized neighborhoods. Here's my chat with him earlier today. Corey, this is pretty cool, man. I mean, how did this, uh, tell me about your history and how all this came about. Um, this is my first year actually doing it. Uh, I'm someone who knows the people that live in these areas and I'm friends with them. And I wanted to just get, change the narrative. Make sure the kids are happy, you know, with so much going on now. I grew up with a troubled youth, uh, troubled childhood. No, no dealings with my parents, of course, but just because of the uh, environment that I was in. But I came up out of that. I rose up out of those ashes and I became someone better. And now with that being said, I want to be that voice for the people. I wanted them to know that I did it. You know, you know who I was before and now, now know who I am. So exactly what are you doing now? Describe what the day is like when you do this. So me being who I am, I started to go fund me with a friend of mine by the name of Natasha Long. And we started to go fund me, tried to raise a thousand dollars. The city of Greensboro helped us out and we raised six hundred dollars. And I I and myself, uh, I and uh, Clarence Mack decided to add the rest to complete that thousand dollar goal. So once we completed that thousand dollar goal, we decided to choose four neighborhoods on the north, the south, the east, and the west. That was Hickory Trails, Ray Warren, Smith Homes, and Claremont Courts. And we decided to spend two fifty for each uh, each uh, housing housing complex. That way, we add a, a total of a thousand dollars. So you got—I can only imagine like what the response is from people and kids. So talk about that. What are you seeing? So I'm, I'm naturally silly. I'm naturally a good spirit. So when I'm walking up, I got two bags on me and I'm just a jet. And I see the kids, their faces are lighted up and they're excited and they're happy. And I'm saying, have you been nice or have you been naughty? And of course, every kid has been nice. Every <laughs> kid in the world has been nice. It's just to see them go through the bags and pick what they want and the excitement to show their friends what they've got. That means the world to me. Like, that's my Christmas gift. Corey, thanks a bunch, man. I appreciate you. Good luck with all this. So yeah, he wants to do this every year, he said, and hopefully grow the number. The GoFundMe page is closed down now because he said he just did it for a short amount of time. But now he saw that response and there were some agencies in Greensboro that helped him out too. And he said, we reached that thousand dollar goal in no time. So maybe next year it'll be 2000 and he just wants to keep this going. I mean, think about the payoff that he was talking yes. about when you see the kids and you see the smile on their faces and half of them lie and say they were good kids. <laughs> that's right, that's right. But right. Um, you also have to think about um, how, how much of a stress reliever this probably is for the parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, for parents of kids who don't have a lot of things, this is a stressful time of the year. That's right. And to be able to provide something like that is a really great thing. Yeah, you're so right. I mean, I've done some kind of toy drive in the past kind of like this, and just being able to deliver those toys to see their faces light up, it's the sweetest thing. But uh, awesome that we have one of Santa's own very very own elves That's here right. in Greensboro. <laughs> and he's, a, you know, think about this, if he grows this, or he will, I think, um, they'll start looking for him. You know, like every year, it's gonna yeah. be a thing. He'll be like the Pied Piper, and he shows up in the neighborhood, right. and they're gonna flock to him. <laughs> I just think that'll be good. We need to follow this progression, you know, over the next several years. Uh, very cool story. It's very good. All right, we're gonna take a short break. We're coming right back. Stay Ooh, let's go ice skating. Here's Chad. I won't fall.
Do you ever feel like your mind is cluttered and you just can't clear out the muck? Well, in today's U Day, Coach Lamont takes a look at how that cluttered mess impacts the way we think. Would you eat out of a garbage can or play in the garbage? My assessment is probably not. However, for many of us, this is the illustration of our thinking. You continue to consume garbage thoughts and play in the mire of their very existence. This means that the thoughts you continue to circulate are not thoughts beneficial to your personal growth. Be aware, we are constantly exposing our thoughts to the world. If you have garbage can thinking, you'll create a garbage can world. Could your stinking thinking be adding to the issues around us? In this case, your thoughts are not feeding people, they're polluting people. The key to good thinking? Consume thoughts that strengthen you and make you healthy-minded. We must cease treating our minds like garbage cans, just letting anything live there. This is Coach Lamont reminding you to have your best you day. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey there, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together like a classic combination. We are staying on top of some breaking news in Greensboro this afternoon. Greensboro police say one person has been shot outside the Four Seasons Town Center on the J.C. Penney side of the mall. Police say the suspect took off before they got there. As of right now, we do not know the condition of the person shot. We also do not know um, the identity of that suspected shooter. Our team is almost to the mall. We are working to bring you a live picture and a live report. Geez, just think about how busy that mall is right now. Four Four days before Christmas, it is likely a chaotic scene in that area. I would avoid the mall if you have to go um, and maybe just kind of go a different time. Again, we will keep you updated on air and on WFMYNews2.com. Good afternoon. I'm Chad Silver here with Stacy Spivey and Eric Chilton. Yep, welcome. If you're watching us right here on WFMY News 2, don't forget you can watch us on Fire Stick, Roku, or even the News 2 app and carry us wherever you want to go. We'll go right there with you with your cell phone. Absolutely. Well, let's go ahead and get to your four to five roundup. 
President Joe Biden announces administration will offer 500 million free rapid COVID tests to Americans. The president's announcement is a shift from an earlier plan, which offered reimbursements for the test from private insurance companies. But people would have to find the test on their own. If you need one of these tests, you'll use a website to order them. The federal government will also set up vaccination sites around the nation once again and offer additional ventilators and equipment to hospitals from the national stockpile. The Biden administration will purchase tests and ship them free of charge starting in January. Just in time for the holidays, the Biden family is celebrating Christmas with a new gift. Meet Commander, the Biden family's new puppy. He is so cute. The president tweeted a photo of Commander captioned, Welcome to the White House, Commander. His arrival comes six months after the family's 13-year-old German Shepherd champ passed away. The Biden's second dog, Major, now lives at the family's home in Delaware after biting a Secret Service agent and National Park employee. SpaceX launched its final Falcon 9 rocket for the year, and it has a holiday surprise on it for the International Space Station crew. The 31st launch for SpaceX had supplies, equipment, and Christmas presents for the crew. It was the second all-new Falcon 9 to fly this year and the company's 24th space station resupply mission overall. The Cargo Dragon is also carrying fresh food for the seven-member crew. And Santa took a deep dive to visit some underwater friends at the Greensboro Science Center. Just take a look at this. Santa and Rudolph went diving in the Science Center's Shark Reef over the weekend. An educator was outside of the exhibit to answer guest questions about divers, sharks, and fish. A fun way to bring to mix up Christmas and learning. You've likely heard about skimmers at the gas pump, but have you heard about an e-skimmer? It's a skimmer online that could impact the way you shop. Let's connect the dots. You've seen skimmers at gas stations or even the ATM, but now there's another place you need to look out for. The FBI now warning online shoppers, hackers are on the prowl for your credit card number at checkout. So how does it work? Let's connect the dots. Online thieves will put code on a website and capture your credit card information as you're checking out. The data then gets sold to other hackers or used to make fraudulent purchases. And the worst part, the FBI says it's really hard to know if your information has been stolen until it's too late. So here's your best bet. Use a third party like Apple Pay or PayPal. Businesses big and small that take online payments are all at risk for taking your information. So before you add things to your cart, you might want to take some precaution. And that is Connecting the Dots. Before you go shopping and connect to all your accounts to your PayPal or Venmo, Tanya will explain how scammers are also taking your money through those third party apps. That's coming up at six. First, we'll talk about our forecast and uh, yeah, we've got to watch the temperatures over the next few days. We're a little bit up and down I and mean, we're used to that right lately. That seems like the way it's been for at least a week, if not more. 40 degrees in the triad right now. You know, our normal high this time of the year is around 50, so we're a good bit cooler than that. But we'll do just the opposite in the next couple of days. For Christmas, we could be in the low 60s, so 10 to 14 degrees above normal as we head into Saturday and Sunday. 39 in Raleigh, Fayetteville 41, Charlotte 45. Here's a look at it tonight. Not changing a whole lot. We think those over night lows staying in the mid 30s for the most part chance of a shower possibly as late as 9 or 10 o'clock and we think most of it starts to move out after that but just know you could see an overnight shower too clearing out tomorrow rather quickly here's what the rain looks like now the heaviest rain is moving east of the triad but more is on the way you can see a lot of this developing in the upstate of south carolina some of the models are showing that drying out but worst case scenario we just see some overnight showers and then that gradual clear out for tomorrow look for high temperatures uh, going up to 51 tomorrow it will be windy as we see those uh, winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour and uh, steady at about 10 to 15 48 on thursday and cold start to warm it up christmas eve partly cloudy 56 christmas day 64 with uh, scattered clouds same story Sunday in 62 and we're back down to 60 still well above our normal for Monday and Tuesday. You know when we think of the holidays I think presents and I think 
food come in the top five? Family is in there too, of course, but presents and food, I think they take up a whole lot of space, don't you? In my belly, mostly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the food, not the presents. Yeah, I was gonna say the food, right? <laughs> well, true. Okay, that's both true. are often part of our charitable Christmas giving, whether that's donating to the food bank or buying a gift card for a child or a senior through the angel tree or something like that. It can be a good teachable moment. They're great for kids to show, for them to see you do a little donating here and there. That's right, and that's something that you can be doing with Baylor, Stacy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, this year we actually we gave her daycare teachers a gift just because we know that they have to deal with her all day, even though she's a precious angel most <laughs> of the time, right? But we just uh -huh. wanted to show them that we care and we appreciate them, and hopefully for years to come, she can see that we do that. Yeah, well, just last year, my husband, my mom, and I, we made breakfast for the women at West End Ministries at the Women's Shelter. On Christmas last year, we delivered it to them in the morning. You know, hash brown casserole, cinnamon rolls, it really can be considered a love language. I do believe that. Now, if we didn't do that, the ladies, of course, would have still food to eat. But many children who get free and reduced lunch, they struggle during that Christmas break, which is why a North Carolina teacher stepped in. Check this out. You have bread and you have mashed potatoes. Teacher Turquoise Lejeune Parker spent a lot of last week packing up bags of food so that every student in her school could be fed for Christmas break. She's done this every year since 2015. This all started with one family. This mom said, we don't have anything at all. The first year, she messaged all her friends and family asking for donations, and they fed 25 students. This year, with more than $100,000, she will feed all the students at 12 different schools, 5,000 students total. And I want them to know that I see them, and that if I have any way I can help, I'm gonna do it. I can't sleep if I don't know that they're okay. It is just amazing how much her mission has grown from 25 students to 5,000 students. I mean, when I heard that number, I almost thought it was a mistake. You know what I mean? That just, that's huge. And so many times we see this. In fact, the story I just did on this gentleman giving toys out to kids, you start out and, you, and it's so much fun and you see, you get, you get a gift too by giving, right? Right, yes, And then absolutely. the next year it's bigger and bigger. Next thing you know, they got nonprofits, you know, it just grows like that. I mean, and it was a hundred thousand and it's not like she Gosh. had a hundred thousand dollars. It was a dollar here from someone, five bucks from someone else, 10 bucks from someone else. I mean, it just kind of grows and grows and grows when we all kind of do it together. It's incredible to me that this also started from one family that she mm -hmm. heard from. Mm -hmm. And I mean, her inspiration just kind of blossomed. And I mean, it's incredible that it has grown so big, but it's sad that mm -hmm. so many people need so much help this time of year. Yeah, I wish that more people would do this more throughout the year. You know, we, we tend to focus on this time of year because it's the giving season, but I hope that this inspires people to continue to give. I mean, think about kids during spring break, they don't have something to eat and even over summer break. So hopefully this will continue. All right, people, 2022, that's it. That's your challenge. That's the year. Yes, to do, do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so today we're talking about our uh, social segment here. I decided to tap into a little humor with my uh, Facebook question today. And you did not disappoint because I asked you to quote, ruin Christmas in three words. It's a joke. Some people got upset with me. Here's what you had to say. Let's take a look. Gene said, flights are canceled. Yep, that would do it. And that's a possibility these days, isn't it? Justin said, batteries not included. I love that. Brittany said, this is one of my favorites all day. This food nasty. I love that. That was the best. Lexi Joe said, mama not cooking. <laughs> that, that is not good either. Uh, Brenda said, COVID or flu? Oh, oh no. Yeah. Uh, Joe Smith, I love this one cracked me up. Your family's here. Apparently he's talking to his spouse there. <laughs> um, and then my former boss, Bob Plinkenbeer, said, Chilton's coming here. That ruins oh. Christmas in three words. Yes. Mm. I, I, it's, it's so hard to keep it appropriate. I know. Uh. I know. Well, so, and someone, um, someone wrote uh, matching Christmas pajamas. Somebody else wrote. Um, That's bad. I know. Stacy and I had this conversation earlier. Mm. She's like, I like that. I, I, we're gonna do it. <laughs> we're gonna do it. Um, what about like still no taste buds? You know, for people who no uh, taste, lost yeah. their taste yes. buds. Yeah, I, I thought of you tested positive. Oh yeah. Mm. Um, Santa didn't come. Those, those are so sad. I know, it's yeah. depressing. <laughs> well, we're ruining Christmas, right? We're not I know, making it better. Yeah. So <laughs> some people were so dark that I had to hide their comments on my oh, Facebook feed. I bet. I was like, you know. I'm sure that politics did not play a role oh, in any never, of the answers, right? Never. <laughs> hmm, that never messes things up. It's um, one of the, oh gosh, now I just lost it. There was one that was cracking me up. Um, 
Oh no, someone said um, out of beer. <laughs> that was their <laughs> okay, that was right. their ruin of Christmas <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> it's very funny. All right, we'll take a break <laughs> and uh, we're coming back in a minute. Out of beer. Out of beer. Hello, my name is Sergeant Demetrius Feaster. I'm here with the 101st Airborne Division. I just wanted to shout out my family back home in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, happy holidays and hope to see y'all soon. Hello, hello, hello. I am talking about ah, body language signs if someone doesn't like your present and what you do about it. Okay. just four sleeps until Christmas. And many of us can't wait to open our gifts, but sometimes one of the more stressful parts of Christmas is finding the right gift. Blanca Cobb, who has a master's in psychology, joins us to talk about how you can read someone's body language to see if they like the gift that you gave them and what you should do if they don't. So Blanca, let's go ahead and get started. What are some body language signs that somebody doesn't like your gift? Well, realize this, if somebody doesn't like your gift, they're going to try really hard not to let you know, because we know to be gracious and grateful when someone gives us a gift. But here are some signs to pay attention to. One, you want to pay attention to their eyes. Sometimes people will get this really big arched eyebrow and they hold it too long or they might like look around or look away, or they can actually pick up the gift and say thank you as they're hiding behind it. So pay attention to the eyes. Also pay attention to their lips because sometimes lips will get twitchy. They'll twist them or they'll hide their lips or bite their lips. This happens because they're not very excited about the gift, but they don't want to tell you, but their body's still finding a way to release that stress or that tension of wanting to hide it. So if you get the sense that somebody doesn't like your gift, should you say anything? I feel like that's kind of the biggest debate here. Like, should I tell them I don't like it? That is a really good point that you bring up, Stacey. Yeah, 
It's an internal battle. And I say, if you really want someone to enjoy the gift, right, you don't want it to go to waste, sit in somebody's closet, then you might want to take a proactive approach. And you can say something like, you know, Stacey, I wasn't really sure what you might like, but I thought you might like this. And hey, and if you want something different, here's the gift receipt, please feel free to go exchange it. I'm taking the pressure off of you completely by opening that door. And then you're more likely to feel relaxed and say, okay, and who knows what you may end up doing with it. Okay, so what should you do if you get a gift that you don't like? That's a very good question as well. <laughs> Look, if you get something that you don't like, of course you have to be very thankful and grateful that someone even took the time to find you something and then of course spend their money on you. And so what I say is you want to be gracious and say thank you, but also comment about something that you like about the gift, whether it's the color, whether it's a unique gift, maybe it's they buy you a shirt and you like the fabric, or maybe they bought you something that could be really useful, right? You have some, there's some usability to it. So you comment on something positive about the gift and then privately later on, you can decide whether you wanna keep the gift or re-gift it or perhaps <laughs> donate it. But that's something you keep to yourself. Well, Vlogga, thank you. Make sure you have a plan. If you need more help before you give your gifts to someone, find the story on our website for more tips from Blanca. Uh, I think I honestly would rather not know. I just, just don't tell me. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Just pretend like you do <laughs> and right, return right. it later. <laughs> I wonder if that's why that there is this big rise in white elephant parties, because oh. you can just re-gift things that you just didn't like yourself. Yeah, yeah, that would work. I mean, that's an easy out. Right, right, absolutely. I was telling Chad that one of the, so I had a teacher, this ties into what I was telling Chad. Uh, I have a teacher once who, and it was a drama class, and he said, if you see somebody's performance and you didn't really think it was all that good, and they say, what do you think? He had some answers which would apply to this too. He said, the first one that I do is he said, I just go, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, work. oh, thank you. And he said, the other one, my favorite was, I would have never thought of that. <laughs> so I thought, okay. Keep those up my sleeve. That's so great. So um, I, I'm not good at a lot of things, but I am really good at gift giving. I am, I, I kill it at gift, gift giving it. every year. So okay. that's one of my strengths. I don't know why that this was the gift that was given to me, but- It's um, one of your love languages, clearly. Gift giving, yep, apparently so. Um, I'm still have waiting. you guys skated out here yet? I have not this year. It's the first year I haven't since it's been open. And you know what, Eric? I think that it looks like the perfect winter weather to be out there. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it actually is. And no one's there right now. We gotta get some people going. Let's go, people. It's 4.48. All right, we're taking a break. Be right back. Oh, there's Don't one. Fall. There's one. Wait, wait, stay on it. He might fall. <laughs> oh, bless his heart. Oh. He did good. He made Close. it.
saw it and she goes, I, I remember that one. Look at this. I'm birthing a unicorn I out of my reindeer. belly button. That's where babies come from, right? That's right. <laughs> out of Christmas sweaters. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, look at Tasha. Look at Tasha with her. Wait, show your, show yours. Yours is a llama. Ooh. And she got it at our Christmas party. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so here's what we're doing. The first one is I name a line from a Christmas song, and you got. A little bit. All right, we are four days away from Christmas, and uh, we decided to have a little fun here before we get close to. Lots of people will be taking time off here in the next <laughs> little bit. Yeah. So today we are getting you in the holiday spirit with our ugly Christmas. Okay, I I can't say ugly Christmas sweaters because I am birthing a unicorn over here. And <laughs> it's I think literally it looks magic. It's like a baby Bjorn he's wearing. <laughs> For right the record, there. this is not mine, but look at how great it looks. <laughs> It's wonderful. It's <laughs> beautiful. Yes, this is Lauren Coleman. She let me borrow it. I think it's precious. Can I, I tell you that mine is the authentic? Because little reindeer. My wife said, I said, I don't have an ugly Christmas sweater. And then she goes, well, here, use this one. It was my mother's actual sweater <laughs> from like 1980-something. Oh, oh my so gosh. It almost, it, it's like shaped like a bomber jacket. True. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, it's like a little crop top because my belly is hanging out. All right, here, let me put this over here for a second. Okay, so here's what uh, we're going to do. We're gonna do some trivia here. I'm wearing a Christmas crop top sweater. That, love may, it. Be a, that may be love a first. <laughs> that may be a first. Let's go wear it to UNCG. We'll go <laughs> That'll work perfect. <laughs> okay. We'll be in jail by morning. All right, here's what we're doing. You guys are going to, I'm gonna read a, um, a line from a Christmas song. Okay. And then you guys are gonna to race to ring the bell to see who oh. can get it first. Ready? Okay. I won't even wish for snow. You know this song too. I won't even wish. You want me to sing it? Yes. I won't even wish for snow. Oh, uh, uh, Mariah Carey. Uh, yeah, yeah the, her, her song. The song that All I hates. want for Christmas yes. is you. Uh, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Good. All right. That helps you out. <laughs> Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow. But this name of this song will throw you. Oh, sing it. No, I'm singing it in my head. Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow. I know what the, the name of the song is not sung in the song. Oh, well, then I'll never know oh, this. No. All right, well, that's Chestnuts Roasty, but some people call um, it, but it's called the Christmas song. The okay. Real song. Oh, okay. No. Right. Man, that was tough. Long lay the world in sin. Sing it. I don't know if I can sing that particular part where that is. I'll skip that one. Do you want to guess? Noel. Close. Was it Away in a Manger? Oh, Holy Night. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. Mistletoe hung where you can see. Excuse me. Be right back. Rocking around the Christmas tree? Yes, very good, nice. Stacey. Um, with some decorations bought at Tiffany's. Oh. With some decorations bought at Tiffany's. It's easier if you hear it. Hmm. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Can you bring the chill tones in? Uh, Madonna this? sang it. It's a Christmas song. It's about the only oh, Madonna Christmas oh, song. Oh, shoot. Santa Baby? That's right. Oh. That's ring the bell. Okay. Lucky. I just like the bell. All right. And, uh, you know, there was one. So, Tasha, our producer wore the ugly sweater. Everybody was excited about it. But um, our uh, director, Brad, said he wasn't going to participate, mm -hmm. but we forced him to participate. <laughs> so here's a little fun Is with Photoshop <laughs> with Brad participating, whether he no. wanted to or not. Is that my sweater he's wearing? <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's awkward. When that. you show up at the same, when you show up at the party <laughs> with the same, same outfit. <laughs> Look at that. That's so glorious. Wow, Look, great. he looks so unhappy. Look at that. <laughs> that's awesome. Twins. Right. Family 20. picture. Twenty. <laughs> are we going yeah, to break? Get, get Gosh, a photo are we done? Here. Okay. Get a photo in yeah, here. leave that up the whole time. We'll be right back. Stay there. <laughs>
Hi there, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three. Which? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. That looked like he had some. Hey, I got my mask on, but I'm doing a mic check. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mic check. One, two. One, two, three. Ten nine eight seven six five four three two one. Ten nine eight seven six five four three two one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Chad, I'll go put your, Chad, I'll go put the mic on the table. time for my two cents. It's beginning to look like we're having another COVID Christmas. The newest variant of COVID-19, Omicron, is the most contagious we've seen yet and will likely set record high daily case numbers in the coming weeks. Medical experts urge North Carolinians to be safe and spread Christmas cheer, not germs. I know it's disappointing spending the holidays yet again worried about this deadly virus, wearing masks and social distancing. But treasure the good this season. This year we have the gift of hope with vaccines and boosters. We can't control what everyone does, but we can get the shots and protect ourselves and potentially others. And look at our hospitalization rates compared to last year. While we're not where we want to be, hospitalizations are cut in half. Let's remember to stay positive too, and also focus on our favorite things about Christmas. Debbie loves the holiday meal with all of her kiddos and watching the Polar Express. For Scott, it's time off work. Kim enjoys the Christmas programs at church. She says it's a great reminder of the true reason of the season. And of course, the end of Christmas signals the beginning of a new year and the light that 2022 brings for all of us. That's just my two cents. That's your four to five. WFMY News 2 at 5 starts right now. We begin with breaking news right now on WFMY News 2 at 5 o'clock, where Greensboro police say one person was shot outside of the Four Seasons Town Center. WFMY News 2 Sydney.